So the 2021 AWSI just concluded in Hood River, Oregon. And this year's event, while not having great wind conditions, it did provide great exposure for improvements and innovation in the market. It doesn't take long to see which direction the wind and water sports industry is headed. So in this video, well, let's take a look at five takeaway trends in what is, what's next, and what could be in this rapidly evolving industry. There's no doubt that the theme of the event was the wing. The gorge, which was sprinkled with wings only two years ago, well, it's now flooded with hand wing hydrofoil activity. The hand wing is becoming more efficient through refinement and lighter material evolution. For light wind performance, F1 has released the CWC three strut hand wing, which initially it had me disinterested with an assumption that the increased weight compromise with this three strut construction but that was quickly eliminated once I got out on the water on a seven meter and I found it to actually be pretty light and pretty great in 10 to 15 mile per hour winds. And there were no issues with tips touching down despite me possessing this frame of a 12 year old boy. This hand wing is easily my new favorite light wind winging option. Also, Air Rush Starboard has entered the market with their Hukipa fabric on their nitro wing and kites for a Dacron replacement for that lighter and stronger material feel. And Ocean Rodeo and Duotone are also using Alula in their wings and kites as well. Duotone has come out with an entire lineup under the D-Lab, which can be explained a little more here by Ken Winter. When it comes to wings, um, the Alula is especially good because it's not only light and stiff, but it's incredibly stiff for its weight. It's far and away the stiffest for its weight material that we've tried. And of course, the thing about a wing, when you have a stiff material, you have a very responsive wing, a, a wing that holds its shape really well. Uh, you can pump it. It's very responsive to your pumping. It's like carbon fiber versus, versus fiberglass. Um, and it allows us to put a lot of tension in the canopy. Uh, one thing you have to look out for with Alula is it can be so stiff that it can be a little uncomfortable. So. Um, it's really a high-performance material for a high-performance rider. And the, the rider that can't handle the uh, responsiveness of the Lula really is better off with a jack line. This Duotone Unit D-Lab hand wing with the new rigid two-handle setup is now my new favorite all-around wing. I couldn't believe how stable it was with all maneuvers. The question will have to be answered by the consumer, though, if the price point makes sense over this traditional Dacron makeup. I have a hunch though that many riders will be willing to sacrifice anniversary getaways and college 529 contributions if necessary to ride under this hand wing. Other nuances in hand wing design seem to be going towards higher PSI, often with a boom or a fixed handle. Some of my other favorite hand wings at the show were the Fly Surfer Mojo and the Elevate WFS V2. The greatest obstacle currently in this COVID landscape though is the brands trying to provide enough supply for the current demand of the market. One would have to think that continued R&D dollars will be dedicated to hand wing development efficiencies and who knows if these wind catchers will even look the same in a couple of years. But for now, they are pretty special. A couple of interesting additions to the expo which centered around the hydrofoil were the Wake Thief and the Rad Bug. Beginning with Devin, the Wake Thief, who has dedicated his time, energy, and expertise to try and conquer the 30-minute unassisted hydrofoil flight. He has designed a dock starter to aid in this venture for the novice, and those specs can be found on his YouTube channel in the link below. In addition to a presentation, he also allowed anyone interested to give it a go. Even if sole foil pumping isn't your thing, there's no denying the crossover advantage to other foiling activities. In fact, the goal for almost endless flight has already been obtained by Devin with something as minimal as a wave runner or a jet ski wake. But what happens when there's no dock and no man craft to pull you up on foil? Well, possibly that's where the rad bug has you covered. Only at the opening stages at this point, but this rider-controlled tow 
could open up a whole new world of motorized foiling aids to help progress the industry going forward. It was one of those concepts that had everyone immediately engaged to witness at the event center. And then finishing the week off with a few Tokai aerials from Jesse Richmond, and I would say that the what could be category checked the box. The hydrofoil buzz of the show centered around the Axis 999 front wing, with the industry seeming to go more towards the 1,000 square centimeter hydrofoil wing for winging. The 999, it fits perfectly. I rode the 999 and found it to have superior glide and lift to its specs, but allowed increased carving and still great stability and pitch control. And here's a little more on the 999 from Nick Obi. This foil was developed based on what the team wanted to ride. Took feedback from a bunch of our riders all over the world, what they liked, what they didn't like in foils, what they, everybody wanted a foil to do. And then our engineering team, Adrian, just got into it, dove in like really deep into the science of what we all wanted. And it produced this. And this foil has just become an amazing surprise for the team. We didn't know what it was. We didn't know it was being in development. And we were all surprised when we got one. For winging, which is what I do most of the time with it, is it's become my one wing does all. I can set up really stable for if I have somebody that's learning to ride, not so much a beginner, but maybe intermediate. They're starting to jibe and they want to go faster. They want something that's going to turn a little better. I can make this wing very stable just by changing a rear, rear tail. If I want it to turn a lot more, I can change the tail, make it more surfy. But the really cool thing about this is the speed and the glide, the upwind ability of this. It just unmatched by anything else I've ridden. Another wing that really stole the show was the North Sonar 1500R reflex wing. Engineered by Delta George and in cooperation with North, the 1500 square centimeter wing, which was originally designed to be ridden mono style without a stabilizer, is the perfect kite winging crossover hydrofoil. While lacking some of the glide of an HA design, the increased speed, carving, and superior stability quickly shows why the 1500 has a place in anyone's hydrofoil quiver. And of course, my favorite hydrofoil for winging the Takuma Kujira 1210, which was well represented on the water and with demos. Everyone wanted to know about those tubercles and whether they actually work. And the verdict is, I don't know if they work or not. I just know that this hydrofoil works. The Monera Halo Harness has an adaptive skin which molds to your body and rigid outer hard shell to absorb all the forces. So the outer shell is not in contact with the rider at any point. The Halo also is assembled in different parts that are not stitched or glued. Therefore, they are easily replaceable. Using the halo harness in combination with the arc spreader bar, and you can easily switch between a hook and a sliding rope and experience an easy to clip system for entry and exit. With many people wanting to harness in with their hand wings on long reaches and to avoid having wing bicep like myself, <gasps> Ride Engine created the wing harness hook, which fits on any standard wing waist leash. It's molded plastic so it won't scuff up your board while mounting and it's easy to position and to hook in. The Elevate Revo twin tip grab handle uses a system that's as simple to assemble as a lightweight grab handle. And with the Revo, your board can access two modes with specific riding parameters. The passive mode maintains a standard rocker with normal flex, which is ideal for speed, carving, comfort, and pop, whereas the active mode changes the dynamics to give less rocker and flex for early planing, greater upwind ability, and it performs better in light wind. The handle retails for hundred bucks, and it is compatible with all Elevate twin tip boards, as well as boards with a seven and three quarter inch handle spread. With the light conditions, there definitely weren't many kites in the air during the week, especially over a twin tip. The light wind kite foilers were out with staples in the industry like the Fly Surfer Soul and the Sonic kites. And then the SLS Duotone kites and especially the SLS Rebel, which may be the gold standard going forward for best performing all around kite for 
unidirectional foil and twin tip riding, as well as the D-Lad lineup already mentioned. And then there was the Airrush Ultra Hukipa, which brought increased light wind efficiency, as well as the core section for three strut wave kite with a smaller diameter strut and leading edge. Well, these were some of the kite bright spots at the show. So the takeaway from the 2021 AWSI was that the wind sports market continues to diversify, that the hydrofoil has revolutionized the arena, and that kiting, winging, foiling, wherever you fall, is still one of the most special communities in the world. From some of the best riders in the world to this podunk wind lover from Oklahoma, it's just a playground that allows all levels to enjoy together. If you're getting ready for your fall riding season or anxious to reserve some of the 2022 lineup, reach out to Green Hat Kiteboarding. Much thanks to them and their support of this channel and for letting me tag along for another great event in Hood River. Until next time.